Okay, so let's go ahead and put together our dragonfly paper sculpture. So the first thing you want to do is grab these two pieces, which are identical. Uh, in this case, we've done one in a patterned paper and one in a solid paper. And that is pretty much just to kind of sturdy this thing up. Okay, so let me move this out of the way here. And what we're gonna do, you can use um, spray adhesive if you want because there are a lot of details on this. And you definitely want to just make sure that you're kind of sparse with the glue here. You don't want, you don't want it um, to bleed through and show any sign of warping or anything. So um, I am gonna just try to be as quick as I can and all of these little nooks and crannies here. This is why spray adhesive would probably um, be a little bit better because it's gonna give you a more even, um, it's gonna cover it more evenly. But I think I can get away with just doing this and you don't have to get every little nook and cranny. Just as long as you get enough. But again, the spray adhesive could be beneficial Okay, so you just want to line that up perfectly just to kind of create two layers here. Okay, so we've got these two layers connected or glued together, I should say. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this white piece and we're going to glue this down and get that nice and centered. Just make sure that you've got it nice and lined up all the way around. Should hit the perimeter nicely on all sides. Okay, so just kind of get an idea of what that's gonna look like and get that glued down. Oops, Not too much glue there. There we go. And this is a little bit easier to do with glue. And I'm just gonna dot this because this glue bottle is brand new and it's a little, has a mind of its own kind of right now. So I'm just putting dots of glue all the way around this. And then we're gonna put that right on top of our other piece. Okay, now this piece is a little flimsy. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue it down like this instead, or at least initially, and then kind of scooch it around and make sure that I've got it nice and lined up. All right, so we've got the beginning stages here of our little sculpture. So far, pretty simple, uh, not much really to it, okay? And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this. Okay, so now we're gonna put our little background on and just wanna make sure that we line this up correctly. Just follow, look for the areas that have the little holes here. There should be two holes on top that show all the way through. That's how you know that you've got it right. Now this, we're actually, we're gonna make this dimensional. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a series of, um, a series of foam squares. Get our foam squares on here. And <clears throat> what I would advise doing is kind of starting at the perimeter here, four corners, okay? And well, this one here's got a little hole there, so you can't go all the way out to the edge there, but you can get pretty close. And then I go in the middle between the two edges, like that, and one here. Now, obviously we can't put one right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread these out. I'm gonna put one there. I'm gonna put one here. Okay, now the little test that I use sometimes is I kind of push down and see where it's going, where it's bowing a little bit when I push down. And that just kind of tells me where I probably will want some extra reinforcement to kind of keep this thing more stable, okay? And I anyway, know, I guess, you know, the more you have, the more stable it's gonna sit. And that's a good thing, because it is paper. 
it does kind of breathe, so to speak. And we kind of want to give this thing as long of a life as we possibly can. So we want to make sure that it's got enough support in as many places as possible. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking over the design here and finding the thicker areas where I can put these half inch squares because these have the most um, area. They cover a great deal of area and that will ensure that things don't kind of warp as much and everything stays nice and even. Okay, and I don't know, well, I can actually stick one there, that works. Okay, and let's see if one will fit. Uh, let's see if we can get one right about there. Yep, okay. And again, just kind of push down in little areas. And I, I'm gonna say that that's pretty good actually. Didn't really need that many, okay. And these, the little, little backs peel off nicely and easily. So just peel those off, oops, and then we're going to get ready to put that down on that back color. All right, so let's flip this over, and again, look, at, look for those two holes at the top that cut all the way through. You want to make sure that those are lined up with the two holes on this piece here. So I'm actually going to stand up and do this just to make sure that I got everything nice and aligned because there's no going back when we're working with the, there we go. Okay, so you see the nice little shadow that that creates. That's exactly what we're, the look we're going for. Okay, so that just leaves some of our little embellishments here and that includes our little cattails. And we have a total of, let's count them out here. Got two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Okay, and I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab my smaller foam squares here because we're gonna need the little ones. These are quarter inch. Okay, and we're gonna put these down in some strategic places here. So what I'd probably do is try to find the biggest one here because the biggest one is gonna go right here. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put an extra foam square right there because I want that to be a little more stable. Okay, so that looks nice. And the cattails here, we're just gonna, we're gonna layer these as well. So I'm gonna put, I don't think the quarter inch ones will actually fit on the cattails. So I'm gonna use my, I'm sorry, the half inch ones won't fit. The quarter inch ones will. And I think two is probably plenty. So just peel off the backing. And we're using like a suede paper for these to kind of give it like a, a, a real cattail look, okay. So I'm just gonna pop that right on there. And if it's off a little bit, it's okay. Probably lift it up and move it a little bit. Okay, so there we go. We've got our first little cattail in place there. And we're just gonna keep working our way around here. And um, they are various sizes here. So kind of put it up to the various little silhouettes for the cattails and do your best to match them up if it's if it's not perfect that's okay and i'm putting a little extra pop dot or square on that cattail there i'll probably go in and add some cat or some uh, foam squares to the other various cattail silhouettes uh, just to kind of stabilize those a little more okay so just going around here and putting our little foam squares on these and then just propping these in place. And again, just make sure that you're finding the ones that match most closely as far as the size and diameter goes for the little cattails. Okay. And before you know it, 
this thing will be pretty much complete. There's really not much to it. These again, these sculptures, we try to try to build them so that it doesn't take a whole a whole lot of work. It just kind of just flows nicely and you get a nice result. Okay. I'm going to put this one here. Just like that. Okay. And we got a big one here. Get two on there. And just peel off the backing. So you get the idea. Um, probably don't need to show you all these, but you do, do want to get all these cattails in place before we put our dragonfly in place here. Let's see, I think this one's going to go here. There we go. Just like that. And you kind of, you want to see a little bit of the green behind it. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit, just to kind of make it more interesting, get more color splashing all over the place. Okay, so we're just going to peel off the backings here and get this one in place. Let's see, where is this guy going to go? This guy's going to go right here, just like that. And that leaves us with two more. And I may as well just show you this just so that you understand the placement of all these. Okay, but aside from that, um, don't really think it matters. Well, there's, there's a couple bigger ones that you definitely want to put in the areas where you've got the bigger cattails, the silhouettes, but Overall, I don't really think it's going to make a huge difference if one is just a tiny bit bigger or smaller. Okay. And that will actually help make these even more unique, depending on who makes them. Okay. So there we go. Got our pretty little cattails on there. Okay. It feels pretty good as far as the support on everything. Um, so what we can do at this point is we have these um, tiny little dragonflies and I'm going to grab a dowel here and what we're going to do is we're going to curl the petals up, or not the petals, I keep thinking I'm doing flowers here, his wings. We're going to curl the tips up like that but then we're going to take and on the inner part curl those down so it kind of creates like a little S. Okay, so curl the tips up and then curl the body down. Okay, and it's going to create like a little S sort of thing for us. And we can actually probably get a little bit more curve on that. Okay, just like that. Bring those up like that. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to get a little quarter inch foam square right on his body and that is going to go right here in this little silhouette area in the corner. Okay, just like that. And then you can lift his wings up a little bit more so that there's more dimension coming off of it there. Okay. And you know what? Actually, that S shape on the inside didn't really stick as well as I would have liked. So I'm going to use a thinner dowel to kind of squish that into place. Okay, there we go. So you can kind of see the effect that that gives. Okay. And grab the other one. So again, the tips were curling up like that. And then the body you can kind of curl down. So we're creating this little S effect. Okay, so curl that up, curl that down. And we can always finesse this again later once we have it in place. I'm gonna put my little foam square in place there. And the backing's already off on that one. That's good. And just position him right over that little silhouette area there. Okay, and I wanna raise the wings up a little bit so they're not completely touching that paper. Okay, so, so far so good. All right, and at this point, what we can go ahead and do, 
Um, before we start working on our final little dragonfly here, um, may as well, because it might be a little bit easier to do this now. This is the little full 12 by 12 sheet that this is ultimately going to get mounted to. And we have a little corner piece here. Okay, and that is simply used to help you with alignment. So what you can do, if you grab a pencil or a pen, probably prefer that you use a pencil or just something really light, you can put that in the corner there and draw a little L to help you with the alignment on that so you don't go too far. And you can take this and draw another one here if you want, and then maybe a third one and a fourth one in the corner. Um, I think I can get away with just um, doing the one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get your glue. Probably would focus mo most of it just around the perimeter because we've got that white part that is kind of masking anything that, any potential warping. But you can definitely do just a really thin, sparse little hit of glue here and there just to make sure that doesn't peel back. Or if you want to use the spray adhesive, you can do that as well. It's completely up to you. And then just want to go ahead and make sure that we get that nice and aligned with that little mark that we made and that we have a nice even border going all the way around. All right. So there we go. Almost done here. Last but not least, we have the main focal point of this piece, and that is our little, or large, I should say, dragonfly. And what we're gonna do is, we've got this mylar here, because the uh, gives the impression that the wings are kind of, um, well, kind of like rainbow colored almost, which is exactly what you see in nature. So that's a really cool touch. And let's take a look at how that's looking so far. I'm really digging that. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I've got a 3 8 inch dowel here, and we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and I wanna curl the tips of the wings up like that. Okay, then I'm gonna take the body, like the inner part of the wing, and curl that down. Okay, so it kind of creates this little S effect. Okay, and it's gonna be pretty impossible to get it like perfectly consistent all around, but it's okay. We just wanna kind of get it in the ballpark there. Okay, so if, we, if I show it to you from this angle here, that's kind of what we want it to look like. And then when it sits, Again, we can kind of we can kind of pull these back and finesse them a little bit more. Okay, so once we have the wings kind of trained, we're gonna take our. I mean, if you're using vellum, that's fine. It'll probably be a lot easier for you to work with the vellum. Um, we've got a piece of mylar here, which um, has this little rainbow sort of effect look, which I thought would look really cool. And we're gonna glue that down, and then we're gonna sandwich it with another piece. It looks exactly the same. So I'm just putting some glue down here. And we're gonna get the wings in place. Okay, now this may flatten out a little bit, which is fine. As long as we've kind of started to train everything. Again, if you're using vellum, you're not gonna need to worry about um, retraining this. If you're using the mylar that we are, uh, it may be a little more difficult because it is kind of like a plastic, but it's not horribly difficult. So there you can see the little effect that we have there, and it's actually staying in place pretty well. Okay, so we'll get our other piece here and get that glued down. So let's go ahead and do that. Get our glue on the wings, and then we're just gonna sandwich this between another piece and pretty much pretty much be done here. We just got to put one little piece on his body and then we will probably just uh, use a little foam square to adhere him to the 
the actual final, or the actual structure of the, uh, this thing here. <laughs> okay, so just make sure that you've got that nice and centered. Let that, kind of hold it down for a second. Let that glue really set before you do anything else. Okay, and we're gonna be very patient with this while it really sets. Again, if you're using vellum or if you're not using this at all, this is gonna be a lot easier for you. Okay, and again, we're gonna take this and we're gonna curl these up and then we're gonna curl these down. I mean, I'm technically doing the same stroke, but I'm flipping it over as I'm working the other side just to make it easier on me. Okay, and like that. And again, um, that might have been a little bit too much, but that's okay because we just want to make sure that just want to make sure that um, they have a little bit of that memory of what we did, um, you know, in the threads of the paper, so that when we ultimately shape it again, um, it will sit nicely for us. So, at this point, uh, we do need to put glue on the entire body as well as on this part here. So you gotta kinda work quick. Okay, and at this point, uh, adhesive, spray adhesive would probably not be an option because you may risk getting, uh, the adhesive might kinda show through, I guess. So do your best to cover all the little nooks and crannies here on his body. That, let's get his tail. Could probably do this in stages. You could probably uh, use some spray adhesive in certain areas, like the tail, but I don't think it's gonna work in this little area here. And actually, you know what? Maybe it would. I don't know how the spray adhesive would show up, if it would show through. But I'm happy with that, and I'm just gonna kind of work quickly here. I'm looking at the tail as I do this, and trying to get that lined up first. Okay, and then the rest of it should kind of just fall in place. Okay, so we've got this pretty much in place here. Now we want to be patient and let that glue set. And what I probably will end up doing is taking a little Q-tip and just dampening it just a tiny little bit and cleaning up some of the little areas where Maybe I got a little glue that shot out, okay? But it's not horrible, and it actually looks really good, okay? So all that's left to do at this point is put this little blue piece on this area here, okay? We're gonna glue that right on there, and then we're gonna take and using pop dots, or uh, in this case, the little foam squares, we're gonna put the foam squares on various parts of the wing here and just adhere that to this, uh, the actual canvas as we can call it here. Okay, so again, I am gonna go ahead and at this point, I'm gonna curl this. Probably just gonna use my fingers. I don't wanna use this dowel. I'm gonna use my fingers to kind of give this more of a lively shape, okay. And again, this Mylar kind of, uh, it wants to resist, so you may not be able to achieve that look as well with something so thick. But, I mean, it's, it is working though. You just have to be patient. And you probably should not do this so soon after gluing everything. You may want to wait maybe five additional minutes to let that glue really set. I'm kind of, doing this quickly. Okay, so I'm lifting this up and I'm pushing this down. And I'm just doing it very subtly and gently. Okay, I'm just kind of training that paper just to kind of give the wings a little extra something so they're not so flat. Okay, I'm gonna actually kind of curl that up a little bit more. Okay. So let that sit for a second while we put the blue part of his body onto the green part of his body. Just 
get that glue out to the little, out to his little hands there, his little arms, and work some more glue around his body there. There we go. And just get that nice and lined up with the green part. There we go. Just like that. Great. All right, so now at this point we can flip them over and start putting our little foam squares down. Definitely want some half inch ones on his body, the main part of his body. And then take some little quarter inch ones and fill them in wherever we can. Okay, I'm gonna put one right there. I think that's enough for his tail. Probably put one right at the tip of his head there. <clears throat> okay, and then since the wings are kind of curled at the ends here, I don't think we really wanna put anything right at the tips. Probably wanna work on and add these foam squares at the lowest points of the wings here, which would be here. Okay, and there'd be one here. It's not gonna take much for this guy here. We don't, we don't need to cake him with, with too much of this stuff. I think that's enough actually. So I'm gonna peel this up, get rid of these backings. And we're gonna put him in place and call it a day. Okay. And before I do that, I'm gonna curl these up a little bit. Okay, so his wings are kinda of coming up a little bit more and then down. Kind of just bending them in like that. Go. Beautiful. All right, so let's get him in place here. And he's gonna go like this, just like that. You can kind of see where the outline is of everything. Just do your best to get that all nice and matched up. And push down in the areas that contain the little foam squares and you can curl the wings up a little bit more and there you go. You are all set. Okay, so once you've got everything together, just get yourself a 12 by 12 shadow box, pop that in there, put the back on and let's just take a look at what that's going to look like when it's all done. So I will end up putting some bling on this, uh, on the various holes out here, just to kind of jazz this up. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much it for this piece. I think it's, I think it's beautiful and it's really quick. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.